In Kane's blood and in Project Kane, the Defense Department has been designing new bioweapons uh, using the genetics of anger and violence. And to do this, they've been harvesting these genes from uh, some of the most violent people on Earth, which is serial killers. Now, the doctor in charge of this program wants the best of the best. So he has taken the extra step of actually cloning some of the world's most infamous serial killers, both living and dead. Uh, the Son of Sam, Ted Bundy, Boston Strangler, those type of gentlemen. They've been working on this program for about 20 years. So the clones that are involved in this are mostly in their teens at this point. Some of them have been raised normally by normal households, normal people, you know, normal conditions. And some have been raised in environments that duplicate or are even worse than the environments that the original serial killers were raised in. The story starts when the doctor in charge of the program releases the bad ones. The uh, shortest version of, of why there are two books is I'm a high school teacher uh, and I teach at an all boys high school English and uh, one day the students got on the subject of serial killers which is something an all boys school will do at times. I got thinking right then that I'm like hey teens are a lot more interested in serial killers than I thought they might be and I'd written a story many many years before that I sort of dusted off and I retold is a, is a book for teens about these clone serial killers. And I sent it to my agents to be, and they're like, cool story, what about an adult version of this? Which was a good idea, it, it allowed me to explore um, different themes and different ideas, follow different characters. That became Cain's Blood. And as soon as I turned that in, like the very next day, they're like, hey, cool, would you be interested in doing a teen version based on this Jeffrey Jacobson character? who is the 16-year-old clone of, of Jeffrey Dahmer, because he's a really interesting character. We like more on him. And so that became Project Kane. The research for Kane's blood started, of course, with serial killers, um, both the nature and nurture of, because that's what the book's sort of a study of, on, on you know, what, what's the balance. First, they studied the nature of serial killers. What are the actual genetics involved by, by today's standards on, on where we think this, this anger and aggression and violence comes from? Then I went to the nurture which I spent a lot of time on the biographies of these actual serial killers. And researching, you know, where Dahmer and Bundy and De Salvo and where, where these serial killers, how they were raised. You know, if it's a nature nurture thing, what were their parents like? What were their childhood like? You know, what were they like at 15, 16? As to why serial killers are, are very popular and have been, you know, since sort of Silence of the Lambs in the last 20 years after, is a couple of reasons. First, first, I think there's just the morbid curiosity. The idea of they could be anywhere. You know, the estimates are between two and four percent of, of human beings are sociopaths, and not a joke. While many of them may end up in Washington or on Wall Street, um, a lot of them are in our places of employment or in our neighborhood um, and, and that kind of thing. So I think that's sort of an interest there. It's, it's tough to see these these guys coming.